Hey everyone, this is Aria. In this tutorial, I want to show you how I made this looping animation using a soft body simulation as well as a dynamic paint simulation. Let's get started. Open up a new scene in Blender, then hit A to select everything and hit delete. Next, we can just add our ground, so let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Then we want to scale this up, so hit S to scale and type in 10. Next, we can add our sphere, so let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and click Icosphere. Let's bring this up by hitting G, Z, and we can type in 4. Now that we have that, we can right click and shade smooth. Then let's just head over to the modifier properties. Click here and add a subdivision surface and set this to 2. Now that we have our setup, we can head over to the physics properties. Then we want to add our soft body simulation, so we're just going to select that. Then if I was to hit play, you'll see that it sort of just floats up and down around its origin point. And the reason it's doing that is because of this setting here named goal. If I open this up, you'll see that based on these settings, it's going to sort of bounce around. And if we were to bring this all the way up to 1 and hit play, you'll see it doesn't move at all. This can be useful for other simulations, but in our case, we're just going to turn it off. Then you'll see if I hit play, our ball falls right through our floor. So before we go any further, let's click on our ground plane and add a collision. Now if I hit play, you'll see that our sphere falls down and it hits our ground plane, but it sort of just collapses into itself. So the next thing that we need to do is add self collisions. Then now you'll see if I hit play, we have a drop and it's kind of like jello. Next, what we want to do is go over to our edge settings and open those up. If I was to lower these settings down and drop our sphere again, then it's a little bit more soft. These push and pull settings just have to do with how strong these are resisting gravity. Just leave those to default. The damping as well, if I was to raise that up and hit play, you'll see that it's just less bouncy, so it's kind of dampening the motion. Then if I was to set it lower, you'll see that there's a lot more jiggle. I'm just going to leave this to default for now, but feel free to play with that. This next thing here, we're just going to leave to zero, and this just basically treats the soft body like plastic, so if it was to get dented, then that dent will stay there instead of going back and forth between its original shape. Then finally bending, we're going to set this to about 0.5. Then you'll see that when I hit play, it's holding its form a lot better. The final setting we're going to turn on is stiffness. This is just going to help it hold its shape a little bit more. If I was to hit play again, you'll see that our ball hits the ground and it sort of bounces less and less each time and it sort of fizzles out very quickly. Whereas in my animation, you'll see that it always returns to its starting point. There's a few ways to do this, but I found the easiest way is to open up the field weights properties and just animate the gravity. How we're going to do that is as soon as our ball hits the ground and starts to come back up, we're going to change the gravity to zero. Then once it reaches the point here, we can set this back to one so it goes back down. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit more, so GZ, and I'm going to hit 1 just so that it's a little higher up in the air. Then I'm going to hit play, and what you want to do is just stop it immediately after it bounces. Then I'm going to use the arrow keys just to head back until that point where it starts heading back up. So here you can see it heading down, and at this point it starts bouncing back up. So let's head over to the gravity slider here, and I'm just going to hover over that and hit I to add a keyframe. Then I'm just going to click the right arrow over one frame and set this to zero. One more time, hit I and make sure you keyframe that. If I was to head back to frame one and hit play, you'll see that it immediately heads all the way back up. But of course, if I was to keep letting this play, this will just keep going on forever since there's zero gravity. So what I'm going to do is just hit the left arrow key until I'm back to the frame where our sphere lines up with the origin point. Then I'm going to set the gravity back to 1 and hit I to set a keyframe. Let's just head back to frame 1, hit play. It doesn't quite reach so what we can do is just deselect all our keyframes. Then I'm just going to grab this and bring it over to say around frame 70. Back to frame 1 and hit play. That's a little bit closer but it's not quite there so let's just bring this all the way up to 80. 
and this might be different from you, but the idea that we want to get is this ball coming right back up to here and then dropping down again, and that's looking about right. So again, if I was to just show you the first loop here, this comes all the way back up to the origin point and then it starts falling again. We can just keep letting this play through and we want to do the same thing again. So as soon as we see it bounce and start heading back up, then what we can do is click and select these two keyframes, Control copy and Control v Now we've got this same animation where we have our gravity set to 1 and 0 immediately after. As soon as our sphere hits the ground, it's going to immediately bounce back up. Again, I just like to always head back to frame 1 and play it through. And you'll see that's working great. So again, we want to bring our gravity back in. This time, let's go a little bit above the origin point. And what we can do is just select this keyframe that we created before. Control copy and Control v Back to frame 1 and let's let that play through. That's pretty close, but I'm just going to select this keyframe here and just bring it over just a little bit to around frame 155. Then let's let it play through again, and that's looking a lot better. So one more time, we want to make this bounce, so we're just going to let it play through. Back to when it starts heading up. Again, you can either select these two keyframes here or these, it doesn't matter. Then Control copy and Control v to paste it there. We're going to head back to frame 1 and let this play through. For the final time, we want to add our gravity back in, so let's just let this play through a little bit. We can click on either of our single keyframes, Control copy one more time, and Control v Back to frame 1 and let's let this play through. It's not quite going high enough, so I'm just going to bring this all the way up to frame 230. And that's looking really good. We can even just bring this frame back a couple if we wanted. Just to get it perfect. And that's looking really good. So the next thing we want to do is to get this to loop if we can. So what we need to do first is bake out our simulation. So back in the physics properties, let's head up to the cache. Then we can hit bake. The way we want to loop this is head back to frame 1, let this play, and we want to find where this comes down on the first bounce, which for me is about frame 79, and add that as our starting frame. Then if I hit play, you'll see that it's going to go through its animation. As it's coming down the second time, that's where we want to add our end frame. So for me, it's 225. Then if I was to hit play, It looks a bit quick, so I'm just going to add another frame and see if that works a little bit better. Now that's looking really good. That's the first part of our simulation done, so we can just leave that for now and select our ground plane. Then we're going to head back to our first frame, which of course for me is 79, and for you it'll be somewhere around there. Just make sure to head back to whatever your first frame is. With our ground selected, make sure you're in the physics properties and we're going to select dynamic paint. I'm just going to minimize our collision just so it doesn't get confusing and you'll see right here so far this is all we have for our dynamic paint. If I was to click here we only have two options and in this case we want to select canvas. You just want to think of this like this is where we're painting and this is going to be our brush. Select add canvas. It automatically sets up our keyframes for us. So we can just scroll past that. What we want to do is select this option here and instead of having paint, we want to select waves. If I was to hit play, you'll see that absolutely nothing is happening. There's a couple reasons why. So the first thing is, if I go into edit mode, you'll see that we only have four vertices. Which of course means there's only one face and we can't really displace one face. So what we want to do is right click and subdivide our mesh. I'm just going to go down to the bottom here, open up the subdivide settings. Then just to start, I'm going to type in 30. Now if I go back into object mode, head back to the first frame and hit play, you'll see that still nothing is happening. So the next thing that we want to do is I'm just going to hit end to open up our transform tab and you'll remember in the beginning we scaled our ground plane by 10. But when you're doing simulations it's always good to apply your scale. So we're going to hover over the 3D viewport, hit control A, 
and apply our scale. Now you'll see our scale values are back to one. Let's hit play again and you'll see that still nothing is happening. So the very final thing that we want to do is just to bring our ground plane up a little bit. I'm going to select the Z axis and type in 0.1. Finally, if I hit play now, you'll see that we have a slight deformation in our mesh. Let's bring this up a little bit more, say 0.3. Play again and you'll see that we definitely have a deformation now in our mesh. Let's right click and make sure to shade smooth. Now we can go back into our dynamic paint and change some of our settings. In our case, it doesn't really matter if this is on or off, but I'm just going to set this to on. Next is our time scale. These both have to do with how quickly the wave forms and how they look. We can just leave these to one for now. Next is damping, and this is pretty self-explanatory. If I was to set this to one and hit play, you'll see that we get this kind of dent and that's it. It doesn't really turn into a wave at all. So for now, I'm just going to set that to zero. And of course, now you'll see that our wave doesn't dissipate at all. It just keeps going. Next is our spring value. And you'll see that it explains it here as how quickly it pulls the water back to zero. My opinion, the best thing to do is just experiment. I'm going to set that to point 0.1. And this is just the steepness of the wave. So if I hit play, you'll see that our waves are very large and smooth. Then if I set this to zero, you see that our waves are a little bit tighter. Once you start mixing these settings around, they're going to get a little bit confusing as to what part is affecting what. So I find the best thing to do is to just try a couple different things until you get a wave looking like you wanted to. One thing that we can definitely do is head back into edit mode and add a few more vertices. I'm going to right click and click subdivide. Just be careful with your system that you don't add too many, but I'm going to set this to two. You'll see that our waves are a lot more defined and closer together. I'm going to subdivide mine once more, but if you've got a slower system, you may just want to leave this. At the very least, save it before you add more subdivisions in case it crashes. The next thing I'm going to do is add some damping back in. So I'm going to set this to something like 0.3. By the time our animation loops, there shouldn't be any waves left. That's looking pretty good. You could probably add a little bit more damping. Then once we have our wave just about right, you can open up the cache settings and hit bake. Then honestly, doing the background was pretty simple. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I get a lot of comments and questions asking for help with my tutorials, but it's hard to go through all those comments sometimes. So I'm setting up a discord soon and that'll be a place where we can all help each other as well as come up with ideas for new tutorials. I'll be setting out access to my Patreon members and YouTube members once I have that set up as well. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.